Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. Today we are working on a 2003 Toyota Corolla. On the Corolla there are a few jobs we're going to be tackling. As you can see there is a crank seal, an o-ring and a belt that is currently lathered in oil under the hood of this thing, a valve cover gasket. We're also going to be doing a passenger side wheel bearing and of course some exhaust work with this heat shield. So, check out some of the various videos that I'll be posting about the repairs for this Toyota Corolla. Do me a favor, boys and girls, before we get started with today's video, please hit that subscribe button. In today's video, we're going to be showing you an exhaust repair. Basically, this flange over here has rotted away. Besides the flange rotting away, this heat shield has also rotted away. Normally on most cars, I wouldn't bother replacing the heat shield, but because this exhaust pipe runs right underneath your gas tank, I'd say it's a good idea to replace it. Now in most cases, most muffler shops or shops in general are going to tell you that you need to replace your resonator pipe as well as your muffler pipe. Because of course your flange has rotted away. But at Jimmy's Auto Clinic, we're going to cut this flange out and put in a piece of straight pipe. Because the original pipe, contrary to popular belief, is much better than your average aftermarket pipe. For example, this is an aftermarket pipe that was bent up for a Toyota Matrix. This particular pipe is about two years old. As you can see, it's not doing so well. Um, so I think... I may be onto something with trying to save the original OEM parts instead of replacing them with aftermarket, what can only be described as junk. Now, of course, you can get parts that have a lifetime warranty, but do you really want to crawl under your car every couple of years to replace the same busted parts? I think not, friends. So let's go ahead and start the process by getting rid of all of the mechanics wire that's holding this exhaust system together. Here, 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 as well as here and here. I'm pretty Pretty sure I'm gonna find some more. The best way to deal with this sort of wire is a pair of side cutters. Go ahead pull the wire down and then just squeeze. You're gonna do the same thing on either side and then grab the whole wire assembly and yank. If you get trapped like that bend the wire a little bit yank some more. Success, boys and girls. Now follow the same method for all the other piece of wire that is attached to your vehicle. Now, of course, you may be able to tackle the heat shield job at home in the driveway. It will be a pain because you gotta crawl all underneath the car, which isn't fun. But with regards to this guy here, this is something that you might not be able to. You're going to require, of course, a pipe bender or swedger, something to expand the pipe, as well as a welder so you can mend the two pieces together. With all the wiring that held the exhaust system together, out of the way, go ahead, yank the pipe down and pull this guy out. Be very, very careful when working with metal like this. It's extremely sharp and jagged and make sure your tetanus shot is up to date. Now, if you are attempting the exhaust portion of the job, what you want to do is cut away as little pipe as possible. The reason being is you can slip joint a piece of pipe over this and then clamp it. That'll also work, of course, not as good as welding. Welding is always the best because it's never going to come apart. So what I'm going to do is cut it about uh, three quarters of an inch from the weld here. And then on the other side of the pipe up here, we're going to do the same thing. All right, now begin cutting. <laughs> Now do the other side. So here's a tip boys and girls. Um, if you get a death wheel or cutoff disc, uh, it makes your life a lot easier with the sawzall because the sawzall has a path already carved out of the pipe so that it can fall right into it and cut the pipe much easier. I'll show you how to do that now. Now the only thing to be mindful of when using the death wheel is the gas tank. Be sure that you don't have any evaporative emissions leaks or any sort of fuel vapor leaking out from anywhere in the system. You've got to be extra careful because no one likes preparing a eulogy. Okay boys and girls, let's go ahead and make our incision. Remember, eyeglasses, always important. 
With your incision made, go ahead, insert your blade, your Sawzall blade that is, and begin cutting. That's a uh, thumbs up for me. Now with the piping out of the way, I'm going to leave the piping portion of the exhaust job out of the way. What we need to do before we go ahead and secure this piece of pipe to the muffler is of course take these bolts out that secure the heat shield to the fuel tank. If you live in the rust belt, you will see that this here in the clump of what looks to be just rust is a bolt and nut combination on the gas tank strap. Your best friend in attempting to break this nut loose is going to be WD-40. I should get a better can of the WD. This one's... This one's years old and has had the crap kicked out of it. <laughs> Anyhow, spray it with some WD-40. And then what you'll do is get the 10 millimeter socket needed to crank these guys off. What you want to do is work it back slowly, back and forth, back and forth. If for whatever reasons the bolts break, which most likely will happen in this case, we're going to have to replace it with a nut and bolt and call it a day. But caution, do not use heat or any open flame or a mini inductor to heat these bolts up on the gas tank. It is extremely dangerous and you will probably end up in the news. Pray to the Toyota God and give it a little bit. Okay, well, uh, let's go get the 3 8 socket. Get the 3 8 socket on there. Okay, well, that looks like a pain in the ass. Let's go employ the use of a vice grip to hold the strap stationary. Get the vice grip on there and... And it broke. So, um, great. We're gonna have to now drill that stupid thing out and get a nut and bolt in there. So after a lot of work, we were lucky enough to have only the one broken bolt. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is drill it out. Get a center punch and center punch it. As close to the center as you can, then get a 1 8 drill bit and carefully drill through the bolt. Now, whatever you do, the key to success here is not to drill into the tank. If you pierce the tank and make a hole, life will be bad. With a 3 16 bit, go ahead and drill the rest of the way through the bolt. All right, that's a stroke of success there. If only it would have come out the other way. Now, we're going to have to get a flat screwdriver and push that guy out. Let's see if we can push this guy out here. Yeah, there we go. Once that guy is out of the way, get a M6 by one millimeter pitch tap and tap all of the holes. Again, be sure not to pierce any holes in the tank. That would be a bad idea, boys and girls. Retract the tap and repeat the process for all the other remaining nuts. Okay, boys and girls, with your bolt situation all taken care of, get your brand new heat shield and put it into place. Pull down on the pipe. And just sneak it in. Get that handle cable out of the way. Okay. Now go ahead, get your brand new hardware, anti-seize it, and then you can fire it into the holes. Be sure to use extra small bolts, like this one here, for the tank straps. Don't fire them home right away, just do it loosely. That way you can adjust if needed. We're going to need some washer for the uh, tank ones. Okay, let me go get some washer for these guys here. With their washers in place, go ahead and fire home your new bolts. 
Center the washer as much as you can and don't misplace the gun you need to do the job. All right, found it. Perfect. Oh, come on, you're out of focus, really? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. That's right, it's not rattling all over the goddamn place. Now, with the heat shield out of the way, we can now commence with the pipe portion of the exhaust job. With the exhaust job, the most important thing, especially on the Toyota Corolla or this particular model, is to hold the exhaust muffler in place properly. As you can see, naturally, it wants to sit like this. But, of course, it will collide with the heat shield when it sits naturally. So, we need to correct that by holding it like this. What we can do is employ the use of a friend or some rubber hangers to keep this thing stationary. As many of you will know, I don't have any friends in the shop, unfortunately. But I do have rubber hangers. So, push the exhaust over and then just push that guy in between the exhaust. And what you want to do is make sure that it looks as though it is sitting as straight as possible. It may not look that way on camera, but in actuality, it is. With the muffler sitting straight, you can see that the pipe actually lines up quite straight. What you need to do is deburr the pipe and get any sort of metal off like that on the pipe you want them clear of any sort of intrusion that may hinder the other pipe from going on now what we need to do is of course measure the distance between this pipe here and this pipe here because I'm going to weld all I need is an extra three-quarter or half of an inch of pipe on either side so add that into the total amount that you get and if you're going to flare and then clamp you'll need two inches of pipe on either side in total, I need five inches of pipe. If you have an expander, which most people won't, you can of course expand your pipe, but you need some help in terms of how much to expand it. So what I like to do is take the garbage piece, line it up with the new piece like so, and see how much off we are. You can see there, we're about one eighth of an inch off, which means that we're not going to expand this to two inch ID, ID meaning inside diameter. What we're going to do is expand it slightly under. One of the most satisfying processes and machines that I've ever had the chance to work with, my bender. As you can see, it fits inside perfectly with just a little bit of slack for adjustment. Let's go put it on the car. Put your new piece of pipe in place and of course if you're clamping it, clamp it and you'll be done with it. We're going to weld it. So what I'm going to do now is line it up as best I can, make sure that it's not going to collide with anything and then we're going to tack it in place, pull this off of the car, this being the muffler and the pipe and weld this up off of the car. The reason being is because it's going to be extremely hard to weld on this side with the MIG. Make sure you double check everything and the alignment of the muffler and go ahead and tack Pack the piece of pipe in place. Tack it on the other side. Now we can go ahead, remove the thing and weld it comfortably. If you are in the automotive world and you have to do a lot of exhaust, the best tool to remove hangers is this guy right here, my friends. Best thing ever. I'm making this tool look horrible on uh, camera here, which is bad. Um, but uh, just trust me on this one. Prepare to be amazed. Now tell me, boys and girls, that isn't amazing. Is that not amazing? I told you you'd be amazed. Okay, let's start welding.
Now, of course, you can grind off the rust if you want to. Eh, whatever. I'm not really bothered by it. Now, just flip it over, weld the other side. What I have done is grind off the surface rust to show you specifically that it does make a difference when welding. <laughs> You can see there the burn-in and the penetration is much better. There you go boys and girls, it is all done. Now all we have to do is let it cool down before we put that thing back in the car and weld it in for good. In the meantime, while waiting for the exhaust pipe to cool down, it is in your best interest to use some WD-40 on your hangers. There we go. This step will make your life a hell of a lot easier, boys and girls. It's still hot, but we got other stuff to do, boys and girls, so let's go ahead and slide it back in. Be sure not to touch the pipe because it will burn the skin off your hand. You can see how easy that hanger goes in. Now, line it up and then you can weld it in. With your ground clamp in place, go ahead and tack this thing home. Well, that's a good tack. Good job, Jimmy. Do the other side. And now go ahead, put your welding helmet on and weld it up. That's that boys and girls, she's all welded up. We are good to go with the exhaust job. All we need to do now is shake everything to make sure that it is all stiff and not banging against anything. Another thing you do not want to do is forget your rubber in there. No one's gonna be happy with that. All that's left to do is to sweep all this garbage out of the way, start the car up, make sure it doesn't sound like a fast and furious wannabe car, and you're good to go. All right, let's fire it up. That is a success. She does not sound like a Honda Civic with a fart can on the back. So that's a thumbs up for me. Yeah. Well, boys and girls, that is all she wrote for the 2003 Toyota Corolla. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Crank seal, an O-ring, and a belt that is louder than... Do me... Do me a favor, boys and girls, today. Ah, fuck. What can some. Home, what you want to do is cut away as little flange. Flange. Uh. Begin cutting. <laughs> so fucked. I got so many problems, bro. Nobody wants to read about you in the newspaper or see your face on the 6 o'clock news for blowing up because you didn't understand how fuel worked as a mechanic. Your best friend here to attempt this first to. Fuck. Now go ahead, Gret. Gret. With the exhaust job, the most important thing. Spe <sighs> if you have an expander, which most people won't, you can go ahead and expand your pipe. That's redundant and stupid. This portion with the new piece of pipe. So the muffler with the new piece of pipe. Just rambling on, fuck sakes. And of course, the spray ball is dead. Come on, wake up. And now. Put on your face shield and I put on your welding helmet. <laughs> Jesus, face shield. Oh man. And now go ahead, put your welding helmet on. Hammet. Oh my god. It's getting late in the day, boys and girls. And.